it's impossible to simply take a lichen body and put it on a boxer. Well, the Fast and Furious live lichen body is about to come to life at Genius Garage. And there's been a tremendous amount of work going on behind the scenes to get ready for this build this year. In fact, right now you can see behind me the 2007 Porsche Boxster S that was purchased specifically to dismantle and section apart and use all those Porsche bits in the actual construction of Genius Garage students getting to create their own hypercar with the Fast and Furious live body for the lichen. So relating to this, one is getting the students. And I have been completely taken aback and blown away by, frankly, the sheer amount and the quality of all the students from all around the world that have applied to this. Of course, there's a lot of students from the United States, but South America, Canada, Europe, the Middle East, Asia, Africa, India, I mean, Japan. There have been genuinely students everywhere that have applied. And it's really incredible, not only to see the amount of young people that are interested, but the tenacity and the excitement of people who want to take a shot. They, they want to break in the car world. And it's also exciting, very frankly, for me in that regard, of how much Ben Wiki as a channel has connected the entirety of the world in the car community and young people and bringing that together. So for me being in the middle of that and, and honestly, Ed being able to make this happen, for the Lycan to be able to come to Genius Garage. It's just really incredible, everything that's happened in a, in a global perspective. But in getting there and on this path, well, one, we've been thrown a major wrench with the nature of the world shutting down and trying to look after people's public health and safety. The garage I can come to by myself in the meantime, so if we really get shut down with that and it becomes a difficulty, I may just take my time in stripping down the Boxster and getting it ready and the components so when the students are able to work here and move along, they won't be held back in any way. But they'll be able to be the creative process in moving forward. So I might just have to be kind of the custodian and do the dirty work and all the grease monkey work and just getting things ready and getting it prepared for them. But I really don't see any issues uh, for the time span on this. Frankly, it is my belief and endeavor that by June, <laughs> I fear about saying this a little bit, but in June, while the car likely won't be painted potentially in like camo, so to speak, when you see people testing, maybe the window tracks aren't done, there's certain things of the systems that isn't finished, I do expect to have a worthwhile driving platform finished enough that we can safely test it at speed at the Mid-Ohio sports car course in June. So that's really the big goal from there, because getting the car to where it is a platform and worthwhile and structurally sound and all will move reasonably quickly. The biggest portion of that is obviously you've got to tear down the Porsche in the beginning to get it to where it's, it's ready, that you can start seeing the very basics. There's nothing left to take off of it. And then you can look at all of the spatial considerations that relate to what the Boxster platform was and the Lycan. Truth be told, the wheelbase of the Boxster is quite a bit shorter than the Lycan, and it's impossible to simply take a Lycan body and put it on a Boxster. That does not work. This is not like some old kit car from the 70s. This is not like some piece of junk prop for a movie or crash scene. We are building an amazing hypercar or supercar. So, the, you know, the fit and finish has got to be beautiful. It's got to be a worthwhile car, or what's the point? And frankly, that wouldn't be as good a challenge and effort and project for the students. So the Boxster has to be taken down to its basic form and understand the spatial considerations in that and the spatial needs of the lichen body that, of course, we got from Fast and Furious Live. And in doing that, we'll know how much, shall we say, the wheelbase has to grow. So where will the Boxster's platform have to be cut completely, cut in half, split, elongated? What kind of steel and metalwork and welding will we have to do to create a worthwhile structure that is uh, torsionally rigid, it's structurally sound and it's safe, uh, and obviously it will last. Naturally with the Boxster, the motor and the transaxle will be staying in the same place as it is relative to its suspension and basic bulkheads. The front suspension and brakes and much of that in relation to its bulkheads will also stay in the same place. So fortunately that'll work. One of the bigger considerations, as it may sound silly, is the nature of the dashboard and the controls and everything. How much will how it is in the Boxer translate to the nature of the lichen design and the lichen body spatially. But when you get to that point and you realize it, then you know how it can grow and change. And then the lichen body 
How that will have to be to translate over, obviously we think of a lot of exciting uh, and expensive and new technological ways that could be laser scanning, make a, making a solid model, etc. And indeed that's possible, we've got some connections that even actually have offered, we'll see the value of this, to laser scan the boxer chassis, laser scan the bodywork, inside and outside, to where we can take that and put it over the chassis in a model and look at it. But at the same time too, it's got to translate over anyway. <laughs> so it may be frankly just as simple and quite a lot faster to simply take that center part of the lichen bodywork, which is the roof, the A pillars, the B pillars, the surrounds, the door jams, the rocker panel areas. And in the chassis for the Fast and Furious Live where it was blown out of the, uh, the prop airplane and shot out of the air cannon, it actually has a steel framework that goes around the bodywork on the inside that bolts to the bodywork to hold it. So what we'll be doing is removing the bodywork that's more unnecessary from that first step, which is the, you know, the hood, the rear bodyworks, the quarter panels, the fenders, the, the rear, the tail, the nose, all that sort of thing, and leaving the center section. Well, that center section has a rudimentary steel frame holding it together, that what we'll do is actually reinforce it to make a basic steel birdcage to hold it, which will be temporary. And then we'll be able to literally saw that from the chassis made when it was shot out of the cannon. So then you'll have the actual bodywork, the center section of the lichen, in integral or integral. And we can remove that from the chassis and literally bring it over. It's rather lightweight. And with just a couple of people set it over the chassis and hold it in place. And the reason why in the real world it's so valuable to do something like that rather than doing it all in computer and scanning it, that's neat. You can do that in the computer, but if you're not going to replicate it, in many ways there's not as much value. Because if it's just as easy to take the real thing and move it to the chassis, which we're already going to have to do, everyone can instantaneously see and feel and touch and understand how far things need to move. And there's an element to that aspect of design, engineering, research and development and fabrication that is somewhat lost in the computer world. And it's a great opportunity for the students to use their minds and start designing and understanding what if something needs to change spatially, if there's some sort of structure in the way of the, what the Boxster structure is or was. And then they can start designing in their heads how we can create a structurally sound, light, and torsionally rigid and safe chassis that will work with the lichen body shell. Or we might find it be rather simple. It, the, the shell might be big enough to fit totally on the outside of it, and everything can be easily, uh, easily blended together, so to speak, through the fabrication, at which point the integral steel frame holding the bodywork together, we can utilize that, get it in the place it needs to be, and then start thinking of how you can remove that. Because, and this is where it's gonna get really tricky, when you start building the steel roll cage structure, which will make the chassis so much more rigid and safer, that has to very sophisticatedly fit within the bodywork that already exists, that it's gonna require a certain delicacy of fabrication, but also massive process thinking for the students. What comes first? What's the right strategy? If this works, then this. If this doesn't work, then that. If there's four steps in here that relate from cutting to welding to painting, and things have to be removed, or what if they can't be removed, all of these things that come into play, which make this Lycan Bill such an amazing engineering project. But in, in kind of finishing that up in this intro, some of the things that will be the most difficult engineering challenges would potentially surprise you. The things that I think will be huge challenges are the doors. The nature of how one day are the suicide opening doors that go up, the nature of the hinges, getting those angles right, machining and making things that are strong, light and safe, but also the fact that they latch forward. They also have to be executed very, very well. If one were to pop open, it would of course be disastrous. You'd break things if you were driving it like that. The nature of the windows going up and down. The air brake is gonna be a lot of fun, or the wing, the movable wing. That's gonna be a great project for students. And I think the tail lights and headlights will be fun, but they will be a bit tedious and take some time. And then of course, we'll see if there'll be diamonds going into the headlights like the originals. But I think so much of the project goes into basic race car building or supercar building. The nature of the drivetrain, of course, special exhaust, tuning, radiators, basic air flows through cooling places under the car over the car and everything that we do have the opportunity to change I genuinely think this like and build with the genius garage students is going to be the absolute build of the year 
and the start seam. So I look forward to have you all follow along. I'm coming back to Vinwick. I'm going to update you. I have saved some of my best personal stories for this year as well. I know you guys are going to like. And of course, if you'd like to follow this like and build, you can have updates on my channel, which is simply Casey Putsch. But uh, see you guys at SEMA. We are living in some strange economic times and Premier is here to help you use those circumstances to buy your dream car. They have a simple lease program that makes it easier than ever to buy your dream car. They do financing for vintage and exotic cars. I've used them in the past and I absolutely love Mitch and his team over there. So be sure to contact them before you go shopping to understand and get pre-approved for whatever your buying power is. That way you can go to the dealers, go to the private sellers and make a very qualified but perhaps a little bit insulting offer.